Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to do the 2018 AP Calc AB free response question number six. This is a differential equations question. Um, and just a reminder that all of these um, FRQs from the previous um, AP Calc AB and BC exams can be found on the AP official website. If you Google for them, you should be able to find them. So there are PDFs of these problems and their solutions online. Um, and I'm going to walk through this solution today. All right, so the problem says to consider this differential equation. Remember, a differential equation is just an equation that involves the derivative of some function um, and perhaps the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to and that function itself, so x and y here in this case. And part A says a slope field is uh, for the given differential equation as shown below. Sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0, 2 and sketch the solution curve that goes through the point 1, 0. So maybe I'll do those in different colors. So we'll have the one that goes through 0, 2 be in red and this one through 1, 0 in blue. Okay, so remember a slope field is basically um, a graph where at each x and y value, uh, the little tick mark has the slope that the function has at that point. We would just have to plug in the x and y coordinate of each point. That would give us dy dx, which is really the slope of the solution function or solution curve at the point x comma y. That's what this dy dx is describing. And those are what all the little tick marks here are, are showing us. And so uh, a slope field is helpful because it can help us picture what the solution curves might look like before we actually find them. Uh, or maybe you're not even able to solve these differential equations in every situation. And so this gives us a sense for what the solutions look like by knowing what their, their slopes are doing at each point. Okay, so going through the point 0, 2, so that's this point, to draw the solution curve, we just follow the slope field, basically. This is where we're starting. This line is telling me move horizontal. Then I get to this line that says, hey, move horizontal. Continue following the tick marks. That way we go this way. You know, we, we stay in uh, constant, and the same thing happens over here. So, in other words, it looks like the solution... Um, that goes through that point is just y equals 2. We don't have to write that, we just need to sketch it, but to sketch your solution curves, all you're doing is, is following the tick marks. So through 1, 0, if I'm moving towards the right, it's telling me go up a little. These tick marks are saying go up a little, go up, go up, oh, we're flattening out, we're flattening out. And then it's going to probably start flattening out there and approaching that y equals 2 line. And in the other direction, it looks like it goes down. We follow the tick marks. Oh, they flatten out, so we flatten out. Now we go up again. And we go up, and we go up. Oh, we're curving more, we're curving more, we're going this way. Okay, like this. That's it. That's part A. Drawing two curves. Not so bad. So the, the slogan should be, follow the tick marks, both to the right and to the left. And these are pictures, the red and the blue are pictures of particular solutions, curves of the form, you know, y equals some function in x, that satisfy this differential equation that we're given. In other words, if I plugged in if I found the derivative, um, it would be equal to 1 third x times the function minus 2 all squared. Okay, great. Part A. What is part B? Part B says, let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the given differential equation with initial condition f of 1 
is equal to zero. So in other words, it goes through that point one comma zero. It's, it must be this blue curve here that we're looking at, right? So this, this y equals f of x is actually our blue curve drawn there. And they want us to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1. And use our equation to approximate f of 0 0.7. Okay. I want to stress here that we just have to find the tangent line. They didn't tell us we had to find the particular solution. So all we're trying to do is find this tangent line here at, at 1, 0. Right? So we're, we're trying to find the line that, that's tangent to the function here. Sorry, my cursor doesn't really look like it's drawing a straight line. But imagine that's a straight line that's tangent to the function there. That's what we're trying to find. We need to know the slope of the line and a point on the line. Well, we already know the point. It goes through 1, 0. They tell us that. And so to find the slope, we just have to use the, um, the differential equation that they give us, which tells us the slope at that point, right? So we have our, our slope then is going to be given by dy over dx evaluated at the point where x is 1 and y is 0. And so that's our, we have our 1 third x times y minus 2 all squared. Let me make sure I copied that right. 1 third x, y minus 2 squared. And we just need to plug in, this little bar means to evaluate, we plug in x equals 1 and y equals 0. And this gives us 1 third times 1 times 0 minus 2 all squared. So we've got negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, times one-third. So four-thirds is our slope. And then when we know the slope and a point on the line, we get, uh, we can use our point-slope form of a line to get that we have y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, 1, aka our line is y equals 4 thirds x minus 4 thirds. Okay, so that's our tangent line. This is our tangent line at x equals 1. And then they want us to use that to approximate f of 0 0.7. So this tangent line is an approximation for our function f. So we can say f of 0 0.7 then is approximately what we get when we plug in 0 0.7 for x here. So 4 thirds times 0 0.7 minus 4 thirds. And now, um, let's see. Well, maybe I'll factor out that 4 thirds again, because I think that'll make it easier. 0 0.7 minus 1, so really this is like using this form of the equation. Um, 0.7 minus 1 is negative 0.3, so this is 4 thirds times negative 0 0.3, but negative 0 0.3 is the same thing as negative 3 tenths, so now our 3's cancel and these simplify to 2 or 5, so this is negative 2 fifths or negative 0 0.4. Either of those should be an acceptable answer. Okay, and now part C says find the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the initial condition f of 1 is 0 and y. Alright, so let's start by writing out our differential equation. Notice this didn't happen until part c. Um, this is typically the case with differential equation problems. You usually 
do not have to actually find the solution curve until the last part. Okay, so step one, you have to separate your variables. If you don't do this, you won't get any points on this part of the problem. What do we mean by separate variables? All we mean is get everything involving y on the left side and everything involving x on the right side. You should always be doing this through multiplication so or division. Always do this by multiplying and dividing. You never want to add or subtract. That's not going to work out so well. Okay, so um, we're going to divide by the y minus 2 squared to get um, 1 over y minus 2 all squared dy, and we'll multiply by the dx to the other side to get 1 third x dx. Okay, so now I have all my y's on the left, all my x's on the right. My next step then is to integrate both sides. So I'm taking the integral. I'm going to rewrite this as y minus 2 to the negative 2 dy. And we have the integral of 1 third x dx. Remember that when the denominator is when the denominator um, here is not to the power of 1, it's not going to be a natural log. So this denominator has total power, you know, uh, d or degree 2, not 1, so it's not going to involve natural log. So I should probably rewrite it. Um, so that's why I rewrote it as raised to the negative 2. And now I integrate both sides. So integrating this side, I need to add 1 to the exponent, so that's negative 1, negative, I'm going to have my y minus 2 to the negative 1, then I have to think about chain rule, but the derivative of the inside is just uh, of the, the derivative of y with respect to y, which is just 1, so there will be no chain rule. And I can always check this by taking the derivative and making sure I get back here, which I will. Okay, so we've got this is equal to... Um, we increase the power here by from 1 to 2. We divide by that new power 2, so I get 1 sixth. So I have 1 third um, divided by 2 is 1 sixth plus c. You only need to add your constant on one side because you could just combine them if there was two. But don't forget your plus c. That's also an, a point that you'll um, need. And now I think this is typically the easiest place to find C, is at this point to plug in C. So step three is, or sorry, not plug in C, but find C by plugging in your, your initial point. All right, so we're supposed to have the point one comma zero. So we're gonna plug that in for X and Y here. So I get, um, I'm gonna rewrite this as one over, 0 minus 2 it's negative is uh, 1 6 times 1 squared plus C. So I get um, this will be positive 1 half equals 1 6 plus C. So C is going to be 1 half minus 1 6. Um, but 1 half is 3 6. So this is 2 sixths, which is 1 third. Okay, so now taking this equation and plugging in my c value, um, I have 1 over y minus 2 equals 1 sixth x squared plus 1 third. And now my final step, step 4, is to solve for the equation that I want. So now at this point it's algebra. Um, so let's see, there's lots of ways you could do this. What I'm going to do is since this is a fraction and I would really love to flip that fraction so that I get y on the top, I really want this side to also be a single fraction so that I can also just flip it. So I'm going to keep this side the same and then I'm going to rewrite the right hand side as one big fraction. Um, so let's see. 
um, I can use a common denominator of 6 again. So this will be 6, 2 over 6 instead of 1 third. And then I have an x squared plus 2 all over 6. And now I can flip both my fractions, so I get negative y minus 2 equals 6 over x squared plus 2. And I can multiply by that negative to the other side, y minus 2 equals negative 6 over x squared plus 2. And finally add that 2 across, so I get y equals 2 minus 6 over x squared plus 2. And that should be my final answer. Just to check, you could plug in again this point, uh, 1 comma 0, and make sure that works. In other words, like if I plug in 1 for x, do I get 0 for y? Um, so when I plug in 1 on the bottom, I get 3. 6 over 3 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's good. That checks out. Sometimes in differential equations, or often when you're solving differential equations, you run into a situation where you take the antiderivative of something and you do get natural log of absolute value of some stuff. And when you're solving for that, you're going to have to decide whether the absolute value is positive or negative. And um, to make sure you made the right decision, it's good to always uh, double check that the, the answer that you get does go through the correct point. Um, it's just a, a quick way to make sure that you're on the right track. All right, and that is how to solve number six from the 2018 AP Calc AB exam. Have a good day and best of luck studying. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for all future notifications.